Edinburgh. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your background, um, where you grew up, and maybe a yes. story from your childhood that you remember? Yes. Well, I, I was born, of course, in Poland, um, beginning of war. And so the war, I don't remember very much, you know, how it was too small. <laughs> But I remember w in one point there was a lot of bombing and mum was hiding me, you know, sort of trying not, I was so frightened. So when I watched the Syrian war, I thought, oh my God, that's how Poland must have been at that time. Um, my um, uh, upbringing, well, it was hard on mother, because that was, uh, of course, at the war. So I'm sure, but after the war for so many years, we didn't know where father was. Eventually, he did find us through Red Swiss Red Cross because we sh we were, you know, we changed our addresses because of the war, and mum was trying to get some food for her children. <laughs> so we moved to a smaller, you know, small little village. Um, and then school, it was um, we were poor, but somehow we were happy uh, because um, children. You know, don't feel the same as the poor parents who has the uh, worry to feed the children, to clothe the children, to put buying clothes and and so on. And but I can tell you that it was very hard, very hard. It was very little in the shops, and of course, because all, for example, Christmas time. I remember we done all our Christmas decoration ourselves, um, like um, paper. Uh, tins from pe not the cr the cr uh, we even painted the walnut <laughs> and a uh, little apple because we have nothing to hang on the Christmas tree. Um, it's fits, um, you know, the little um, uh, in a nice uh, color paper. Um, sweets and I remember at night time when mum was asleep, we used to, my brother and my sister we used to go and paint some. <laughs> <laughs> but it was lovely, it was lovely. And mum produced uh, uh, from, for example, from ordinary plain flour, she, she produced um, macaron, uh, macaroni, she produced uh, little dumplings, uh, pancakes. You know, she was very inventive. From potatoes, she made potato pancakes and uh, big potatoes and so on, you know. There were, there were no supermarket, of course, you know, but the Polish uh, house, housewives were so inventive, they were really. And school was quite good too, but uh, there were small classes because there was, um, you know, very few of us in that country, in that part of the Poland. Um, well, it was ha in a way it was happy. It was happy, my childhood. But for one, my one dream was to see my father, <laughs> because I was the youngest in the family. Uh, my brother and my sister remember him, but not me, of course. You know, I was born, and he was gone. Uh, so when I first come to Scotland, um, I remember landing in Glasgow Airport, and uh, there you are. It was my father. <laughs> he on by car, and that was something really. <laughs> Um, and then I traveled from Glasgow to Edinburgh, and I, my first impression of Scotland was how beautiful it is, how warm. It was March, but yet it was green grass everywhere. It was, it was, um, and there you are, I was dressed very warmly <laughs> because mum was afraid I was getting freezing. Um, so, and then Edinburgh. I thought it was the most beautiful city in the world. And I'm here, living still after 50 years, over 50 years, and I still think Edinburgh is wonderful. We should be proud of it. It's a beautiful city. No other city I remember having on one side sea. In the middle is the Holyrood Park, what is hills, the Arthur seats, <laughs> the famous, and the Edinburgh Castle, and oh, the, the greenery and uh, the friendliness of Scottish people. Um, honestly. My neighbors, up till we've been here living in Lady Road for the last 47 years, and on both sides the neighbors are so, the whole street are so friendly and nice. I, I never experience any, any rudeness from anybody because I'm Polish. Can you describe your early social life or lifestyle experiences in Scotland? Well, ever since I come, uh, the first day I remember uh, my dad took me to Colonel Rutsky, he was his superior, and I think he come here with, he very little he speak about the war, 
I think that most of the Polish soldiers don't want to speak about the war. They just, the memory was probably very painful. But they just want to carry on with the life and they work extremely hard because there was no social security or anything like that after the war. They, uh, so most of them haven't speak the language yet. So they just physical work and whatever tiller went to do some tiller work, miners, and um, uh, even uh, open little um, fish and chips shops, what, what was uh, not needing much uh, barrier with, uh, to speak English, you know. And honestly, they work ex very, very hard. Uh, for example, General Matrick, he, he went to work as a barman, and, well, he has to he, I mean, keep his wife and three children going. My own dad worked very hard, so ever since I come to Scotland, he make me work hard. He said, well, my dear, you have to work for a living, and that was his attitude, always. But, however, I, I managed to do a lot of, uh, I always liked volunteer works, always. So he t I remember I was invited to Polish Women Association, and I became a member, and uh, we done a lot of nice things, uh, mostly handcraft and meeting and tea, but we make it very useful. We know that in Poland there was pensioners and people who were very hard up, so through the churches we sent money. We used to have uh, Christmas bazaars and Easter bazaars with handcrafts, our own product. Uh, so uh, it was like home. Uh, the Polish soldier missed the family, missed the country, so they start buying from their own ceiling um, with the help, of course, uh, Polish clubs. There was quite a few Polish clubs. There was po Invalid Club, 53 King Street, of the name of General Maczek. And there was, uh, still exists, the Polish combatants, Levin Drummond Place, and, and is still there, uh, because they fell lonely at time and it was nice to get somewhere where they could speak their own language and and have a few vodka <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> and uh, especially at christmas time and things like that they, because it was took quite a long time before they could bring anybody from poland uh, to stay with them here what were your thoughts in the early in the early days in scotland about scottish culture and do you have any stories of discovering scottish culture uh, i love the Scottish country dancing. Ev I even uh, tried myself. <laughs> I used to go to classes and I used to dance. I thought they were lovely. The Scottish country dancing, the pipers, I thought they were fantastic. And best of all, the military tattoo. That, that was really, I still attended. I think it's fantastic. The music, the, the bravery of Scotland, and all the beautiful songs. Um, and the Highlands, oh, the Highlands. And the was, was far as Inverness, and the heather on the hills, and oh, I was full of admiration. And I think it's similar because we love the country. We Polish people also love the country dancing. We like our songs, patriotic song and native songs and uh, folk songs. Uh, I think it, the similarity is there. We, we, uh, we both, no matter where we are, we Scottish people the same. Uh, we like to wear our Polish national costumes and, and, uh, and singing and so on, like the Scottish people, no matter where they are in the world. They, they were proud to wear the kilt, celebrate the St. Andrew, Robert Burns, the poetry, and we have simul similar <coughs> po poetry of Adam Mickiewicz, which we love very much. Uh, it's like the Robert Burns, um, well, similar, similar. So the poetry, the music, the Scottish country dance, absolutely would with the same Polish people, and quite patriotic. We don't mind admitting uh, we are Polish. Uh, we are actually very proud, like the Scottish people. I, I love both countries now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but I never forget where my roots come from. You know, but, uh, oh, Scotland is very dear to my heart. I feel home. It's home is here now. Mm -hmm. But I go to Poland quite often, quite often, and I enjoy it. But one thing that annoys me, I mean, I'm treated as a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I'm not a tourist, I'm Polish. <laughs> yes, but you come here. What is, it, what is it like in Scotland? What is it like in you, Edinburgh? And I, I go, oh, it's, it's fantastic, it's lovely. 
when you first arrived, how welcome did you feel in Scotland? Uh, uh, how welcome? How welcome by the, the very Scottish. much so. They were. I was very young. Well, at the time, I was quite uh, naive, you know, and uh, um, and got lots of compliments from uh, <coughs> youngster of my age. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, I. Yes, no. Very welcome, believe me. They, they were interested because there was very little no, knowing about Poland. Now you know everything, you know, it's easy, very easy. You just go to the, uh, to Edinburgh Airport and a few hours, you, for example, are you, are you in Krakow? But that time it was impossible. It was a train journey <laughs> to Poland, what takes quite a few days. Um, so was very, so I, I tried to tell them what Poland is like and similarity in food. For example, um, um, haggis, we also have similar things in Poland. It's called Krupnik. You know, it's, 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 it's not the same ingredient, but um, similarity is there. Uh, in, and I was, I quite like the porridge <laughs> in Scotland. I thought, speaking, speaking about the food, I still, every morning I have a porridge. <laughs> um, in Poland, um, we are more sort of pork eating country which um, it's, um, um, it's quite different, but um, uh, uh, sheep, uh, uh, lamb meat is not so popular as in Scotland, po point of view of food. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, it's uh, <laughs> not much different. <laughs> Looking back, what were the most difficult experiences that you might have faced when you came to Scotland? Uh, Maybe a personal, you know, like every woman, I think, <laughs> you know, maybe I have good and bad days, but, but, um, uh, but no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy here. Believe me, I am. And that's the honest truth. Moving on to your current life now in Scotland. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, obviously you're working with the Scottish Polish Culture. Cultural, yes, I am the, chair, the chairperson, the chairman. Yes. I have been for the last 20 years two years, can you imagine? <laughs> a long time. But I love the volunteer work, you know, I really, truly love it. And um, uh, we, we try to promote Poland to Scotland and Scotland to Poland. So we have lots of events on from both countries. Um, and the very helpful is, of course, the new generation, the new, uh, the new, the second generation, like Dr. Stefan Boron, who ha still has uh, uh, a lot of <laughs> energy to run a Polish country dancing. Most recently, we have a lovely annual dinner dance with him and a few of, of his team. Um, uh, what else? Um, uh, well. Well, we have concerts, we have lectures, sightseeing tour, uh, lots of Christmas carols, cri concerts, uh, musical concerts in Edinburgh Society of Musicians. Um, well, very, it's a very long, long list what I have done in 22 years. <laughs> it, will, it will take hours to tell, <laughs> but I enjoy every moment of it, you know, really. Um, I have... Uh, I have place to meet. We have the, still the Polish club, Levin Drummond place, what is uh, an Edinburgh Society of Musicians. Very, it's very helpful where I have, I can have meeting. I have can, uh, all even on, in my own house like yourself. Um, I enjoy it very, very much, very much. I have lots of members, and they're very enthusiastic. <laughs> they all have different, but it's different kind of uh, work now because it's all computer, website, <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> But when I started, it was all on paperwork. <laughs> yeah. no, so. What uh, inspired you to go into that, to that kind of work? Well, um, when the Polish Women Association you know, started, well, naturally, they were the war, war time uh, generation. Some of the wife come uh, with, the, with the husband and married during the war because they, they were also a soldier. There was a Polish woman soldier, of course, not just men. So uh, the sort of, you know, the poor so they were one by one passed away and was less and less of them. And suddenly this, um, uh, uh, my niece, Elizabeth Richlich Sharp, she was the secretary of the Scottish Polish Cultural Association. And uh, it was also a Dr. Maria Musugriff, who is still alive. And uh, she said, 
Isabella, why don't you join us, the Scottish Police? Your, en your English is good enough and uh, you're full of enthusiasm and you love everything uh, what is artistic, <laughs> what is culture. I think you will be right for the, play, for the job, for the position, <laughs> not the job, because it's not paid, it's, it's, a, it's a volunteer work. And I say, all right, I, I have a try. You know, and Dr. Maria Musso Griff said, I've done it for three years. If you do it even for one year or two or three. And um, uh, I say to, to her, OK, I have a try. Oh, my goodness. It's a lifetime now, 22 years. <laughs> and uh, in a, but I'm looking, uh, I'm, I have a great help from the younger um, emigration that are come. And I'm trying to, to convince them to take the role from me, you know, so I can have some, <laughs> some retirement. But it seems not, it's going, going, going. But um, uh, without their help, you know, qualification, because there's the qualifying in computer, well, all, you know, all the, all the uh, modern technologies and so on, it would have been hard, I must say. But um, I still keep going. For example, uh, this most recently, I was the box office for selling tickets over a hundred <laughs> for our annual dinner and dance. So I'm still quite useful. <laughs> you know, I love what I'm doing. Believe me, it gives me great pleasure, and um, I'm helping other organizations too, not just like the Polish festival. What was uh, Lidia Krzynówek? I We we also helped them quite a bit and uh, to, to raise some money for Wojtek uh, Memorial Trust. We, our organization got involved in that too. So uh, ver various things. <laughs> so your Polish heritage has obviously shaped what you're doing um, quite a lot with the organization. Yes, um, oh, definitely. Obviously it's had a big impact on everything that you've been doing in Scotland. Yes, well, uh, yes, uh, we help a lot because uh, we have the city lights which was a wonderful exhibition, and went to Poland uh, together with uh, the Lord Provost of, uh, of Edinburgh, Donald Wilson. He, it was, uh, he traveled to Poland to, to meet uh, the mayor of Kraków, Jacek Majchorowski, to renew the partnership. It's a partnership with, between Edinburgh and Kraków. It has been for the last 20 years, but every five years is signed again. And a Scottish band went uh, with us to Krakow, and it was fantastic. <laughs> you know, uh, Scott Pipes, uh, yes, Scott Pipes, yes, I think that's what they call. Um, uh, and they were playing in Krakow Square, and then we, of course, uh, the exhibition was there. The city light. It was uh, um, uh, our that time our secretary um, uh, Inge, uh, Mr. and Miss, Mrs. Inge. Gabrisha Inge married local man, and uh, he he was very good photographer actually, very good. He 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 took photography f to Poland, co resembling the Kraków and Edinburgh. Uh, a tremendous, really tremendous. He done a fantastic job, and it was uh, the exhibition was here in the Central Library in Bridges, and then it was in Poland. So that that was uh, really. Quite a, quite a lot, and also we have um, we have brought a, a very unique thing. It's called Kraków Krip. It's a miniature churches uh, church in uh, two of them actually, um, who goes back century ago, and it runs in Kraków uh, heri heritage. You call it yes, heritage. Uh, um, the, the people of Kraków doing it. All is done by hand. It's absolutely beautiful. I've got a book to show you. And it, it takes them quite a long time. So we brought this two precious things from Krakow. From one, uh, in two occasions, once we brought them uh, from the Krakow Museum of Krip. And it was uh, showing um, in, in here, locally. And the second was showing even in city chamber, together with, uh, with a team of musicians from Krakow. So it, it was lovely, you know, it was not just the crack of uh, heard beautiful Scottish music, but also the, the sea, uh, what in Edinburgh, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's presented with something like that, which, which, which was historical. And we, and we keep, we bought it and we, it's here. Mm -hmm. So each year we, 
we have a working um, group for for uh, for the children. They can do themselves. You know, in we uh, ask children to come and do crib, you know, miniature crib, creative creative work. Warsztaty, uh, call it in Polish. I don't know the ex exactly word for it. So it's a very useful relationship. Very much so. Very much so. What are the achievements that you are most proud of? Well, <coughs> the good relationship between Scotland and Poland. You know, there's um, all those events I have. There was, um, I must admit, it was all successful. And God knows how many I have. <laughs> Comes to a hundred, I think. <laughs> they were all quite at well attended. Exhibition, lectures, annual dinner dances. Um, f for kids, for adults, whatever we do, uh, we are quite proud of it, and I'm quite proud of it. I always come, we use it, the Polish club, sometimes we use it, uh, various places uh, wh which we can, you know, get <laughs> get rented, and they all come quite, come off very well. But thanks to the, I must mention one person before me, it was um, Teresa Dziukowska, she was the treasurer, and uh, Elizabeth Rychlik Sharp, the secretary, and now she is the vice president of the organization. And the most honorable Dr. Colin Kingsley, he is the honorary president. He is retired now, but he used to be uh, in faculty of music um, in Edinburgh University. And honestly, thanks to him, we gave so many good concerts. And some of them, some of the money went to charity, and some of the, you know, just to keep us going. <laughs> you know, we have to have some money for literature and for paperwork and so on. But uh, Dr. Kingsley done tremendous work, and especially Elizabeth Rifflick Sharp, and and, uh, and Teresa Dukowska. They, they honestly, they keep carrying on up till even Dr. Kingsley, he's 92, and we're going to still have a concert in Edinburgh Society of Musicians. Uh, for coming May, you know, just a small one, but he, he's tremendous, mm -hmm. he's tremendous. And we also have a very well-knowing uh, graphic uh, from St. Andrew University, uh, Jurek Putter, uh, I don't know, I think he's retired now, who, uh, who found out that the um, St. Andrew, uh, the, the cathedral, St. Andrew, was built by Timber from the Min altar was built by the Min. Timber from Gdańsk was brought. Can you imagine? But it was, of course, uh, fire by uh, destroyed by the fire. But he found out this somehow, and his dad was Polish, and his mom was Scottish. So that that was really quite a quite a discovery. Can you tell us a bit about your family life in Scotland? I've been married for 46 years. My daughter was born here, brought up here, educated here. She, she works, uh, uh, of course, and I have a little granddaughter now, age 10, who gives me great joy. My daughter is bilingual, by the way, and uh, uh, she, she travelled to Krakow too, because there's the, the offices she work, uh, have offices in Krakow, so occasionally she goes there. And um, my son-in-law is, of course, local. <laughs> local, yes. It's a, it's a, uh, she's have. Well, it, I'm very proud of my family, really. Very, and I'm very happy and very content. But uh, it's I must say, it's a time absorbing, especially with the young one, <laughs> collection from school, <laughs> because both parents working. So it's it, it's uh, it's. It's also quite a lot of <laughs> a lot of hassle sometimes, but it's lovely. It's lovely. Do you, do you engage with people from both Scottish heritage and from Polish heritage as well? Is it quite yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Both. Oh, both. That's what we the Scottish Polish is called yeah. for. Oh, definitely. Oh, we we have uh, we visit Robert Burns uh, country. We we have a um, we have a Robert Burns supper quite a few time and and we attend um, show what what you know of a typical Scottish um, uh, play and uh, definitely. Oh yes, we encourage people to 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 learn about the culture of this country. To, of course, remember our own, but they should 
you should learn about the uh, we travel we every year we have annual outing we hire a bus and the bus is usually full 49 people and and, um, and very helpful is in this matter a book called the Polish Community in Scotland by Tomek Jarski. And this one I will recommend you to have a word with because he's historian and he will tell you more about it. And uh, our organization is also mentioned in his books. So I'm very <laughs> pleased <laughs> with that. <laughs> yes, and we also very grateful and very thankful uh, to the local authority, you know, the, especially the local provost, Donald Wilson, who is a great supporter of our organization. And, um, and also, our, of course, our Polish consulate. And um, I have been quite a few of them <laughs> in my 22 years because they, uh, from day one they knew it will be only for four years. But some of them managed to you know, overlap even <laughs> longer. But they always financially support us and always attending to our things if we invite them, if the time permitted, of course. Uh, without them, it would have been quite hard most recently because things cost money and we're always being uh, very helpful and from the local councillor too. Like if it comes to the project, uh, joint project with Krakow Edinburgh, they're very, very helpful to us for this, very grateful. You know, so, so there we were. <laughs> are there any aspects of Scotland that are uh, particularly important to you? Most important, well, Edinburgh, of course. <laughs> Edinburgh. Uh, well, I, I, I hope Scotland do very well. Whatever happened with the, with the present and difficult situation, because Scotland deserve it. You know, Scotland are very brave people, and very hardworking, like the Polish, and they're very proud to being Scottish. You know, I, I hope the country will do very well where I live. Uh, and also, well, the whole of United Kingdom, uh, well, you know, Her Majesty, and I, I respect greatly uh, what she do. After the, her mother was Scottish, but many, you know, Queen Mother, but Her Majesty done a great job. My goodness, she and she still carry on, and the local government here, you know, I, they're all friendly and. No complaints. I like it very much where I live. Yes, everything about Scotland. Yeah. Um, the weather. That I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't. The only thing I don't like. <laughs> are there any aspects of, of Poland and Polish heritage that are particularly important to you? Well, religious point of view, I chair very much of the region of Częstochowa, the Black Madonna of Częstochowa. I'm a Catholic, of course. That is very important for me. You know, if I'm in Poland, I always try to visit the monastery um, in Częstochowa. Um, and I'm still going, of course, to, to Masses and uh, St. Mary Cathedral, which uh, kindly offer us, uh, uh, not only, St. Mary Cathedral in uh, Broughton Street. And uh, not only, there's various uh, church, uh, Polish Cat uh, Roman Catholic uh, chapel who offer uh, uh, you know the hospitality to uh, to Polish youngster because I can tell you that the churches are packed, you know, with young people. The well, it goes back communist time and goes back when Poland was not existing at all. Was divided, as you know, for many many hundred and thirty or twenty six years. Some I have to look in the paper. There was no Poland. You know, it was divided, and yet the religion. Mm -hmm the strong belief, keep them going, keep them going. They kept the identity by religion, and they kept the heritage by religion. We are Polish, we, and that I deeply respect, and I'm very proud of that. And it was uh, then uh, our famous Józef Piłsudski, who brought again Poland back on the map. But that's history. Let Tomek Czarski tell you all about it. <laughs> he will be better than me. Um, yes. That's, yes. So, um, Sorry brings me <laughs> back memory. <laughs> um, have your feelings about Scotland changed over the years? 
Uh, well, of course, my goodness, we have to go with the time. Of course it changed, you know, people are... Uh, <laughs> people are not so... I, I, I think they talk through, <laughs> through computer, <laughs> they talk through <to> mobile. <laughs> that way, that way, I think uh, it has changed, you know, they used to chat to each other, but now it's all... Com <laughs> even, in, even small children, they look at computer, the little <laughs> laptop, you know, computer and um, uh, uh, the, the, all the mobile and uh, and they have earplugs <laughs> walking on the street <laughs> that, that is a little bit uh, you know I'm, I'm a little bit sorry for that because I think it's nice to socialize to just sit down and talk you know not just through the, the computer uh, because um, well I'm old-fashioned <laughs> that way it did change is yes, but uh, it's um, but far as come f for uh, traveling that's marvelous you know and communication through uh, through email that's marvelous you know the, uh, because so quickly you know, so quickly but um, well modernized of course to go with the with the with the, with the time you know and, um, i think you you're more um, you're more uh, self-conscious what you do and you're more um, i don't know the right word for it uh, but you're more sure of yourself, you know, than than the previous generation, you know, the older, the world generation, where where there was such no such things, you know. The, you are more confident, and you're well educated now. Uh, all of you, you know, even kids are <laughs> very quickly picking up, very modernized, very, but very democratic and very tolerant, very tolerant, and very proud being Scottish. Like the Polish, this we have in common, very much so. The Scottish country dancing, the poetry, and and the patriotic side of us. I think we have that we have very much in common. But uh, yes, do you feel a part of Scottish society, uh, a part of Scotland? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I, um, yes, definitely. Um, it's here. Most of my life was here, and now, uh, just like I say, I have a very nice son-in-law, local boy. So <laughs> I, I even know better. To, but um, but I have lots of Scottish and Polish friends. You know, and I even invite them for uh, some of the Scottish my friends. Uh, invite them for we have a famous um, Christmas Eve supper, Vigilia, what is called Vigilia. Once I was interviewed by the Scotsman newspaper about it, uh, which is more important than Christmas dinner. Um, we sit um, at the table f when the first star appear on Christmas Eve uh, on the heaven. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember the gentleman from the Scotsman newspaper asked, what about this cloudy? And my husband said, well, we just sit down. <laughs> 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 and we share a, a wafer. It's a rice made of rice flour. We share that before we sit. We wish us health, wealth, and so on, and then we sit to a supper, and it's um, it's no meat, no meat. Uh, in the old fashion, we used to have 12 dishes, very small dishes, but for the 12 commandments, but not uh, not anymore. We just uh, have the famous Polish borscht, <laughs> red beet soup, and carp, uh, uh, sweet water, uh, fish, and then um, poppy seed <laughs> with various sweet, sweet as a sweet, and, um, and little dumplings. My mom used to make dumplings from mushroom. We used to pick up in the wood in Poland. Um, I remember first when I went here to pick up some mushroom, uh, the wild mushroom, a friend of mine, Scottish friend of mine, oh, you're going to get poison. Oh, for God, you, you're not going to eat this. And I said, no, in Poland we, we pick this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but one has to be careful. One has to have great knowledge of mushroom. In, in but now all the shops sell uh, wild mushrooms too, in you know, the supermarket and so on. And a uh, lot of Polish products, you know, not just Italian and Chinese, but, uh, <laughs> but also Polish products. And it's quite good, tight tested sometimes. <laughs> Feeling a part of Scotland? Did it, did it come gradually to you, or was it quite a sudden thing when you arrived? Uh, no, for me it was quite a natural thing to do, you know, just. I live here, okay, I learn about the country, I learn the language, I learn the custom, I learn the culture, and uh, just be friendly and nice to, to people. And 
and smile. They will smile back to you. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> that's my uh, philosophy of life. <laughs> be nice to them, be friendly, you know, and they, they, they will, in return, they will, they will do the same to you, I'm sure, because we are all human, my goodness. No, that's, no, I didn't feel I was an outcast or anything like that. Maybe, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. It, it, no, not at all. Do you feel that immigration has a positive fa effect on Scotland? Well, yes. I tolerant, I'm very tolerant that way, you know, because I'm, I'm foreign in a way myself. I thought I consider my, myself Scottish, Scottish-Polish now. <laughs> I feel the, the same, you know, Polish-Scottish. So it's, uh, I think you're asking the wrong person yeah, because yeah. I leave it to the politician, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because um, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know how, what to say about it. Have you seen any changes since the recent EU referendum? Well, the uncertainty, you know, uh, what's going to happen? And it affects all of us. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. And it's, a, it's a bit worry, I must say. It's a bit worry. What I hope it comes. I can't come on the good of it. Honest land, that's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a mixed feeling about this, you know. But I hope. I pray to God that good thing comes out of it, you know, because the uncertainty, it's, it's no good. You know, I hope uh, one way or another, but whatever come, I wish Scotland, Britain, all the best, because I've been happy here, and I am still. Has your opinion about the UK changed since, since that referendum? No, no, no. No, I, I, I just watch and observe and listen to the news, read the newspaper, you know, and I, I you know, I'm a, a bit sad about it, you know, I thought, oh God, what's going to happen? You know, that, that's about all I could say about it, you know, but I carry on as usual, and uh, I think that's the best way, you know, carry on as usual, working, thinking, what to do, caring for family, care for the organization, <laughs> everything goes well, and and so on, and that keeps me busy, you know, because wor worried, sitting and worried doesn't do any good, mm -hmm. you know, just carry on wi as usual, mm -hmm. you know, that's what Her Majesty also said, I remember once, <laughs> you know, and the first minister of our, you know, and uh, most recently I was invited to attend to Downing Street um, uh, on, the, on, on the occasion of the two prime minister, uh, uh, Theresa May invited me, um, and also uh, the Prime Minister of Poland, come Beata Szydło. But I must say, I was invited before by Tony Blair, before Poland joined the European Union, I was invited to London too. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't, the meeting wasn't in Downing Street, it was somewhere else. So it, in two occasions, as a representative from Polish community from the Scottish Polish. I was invited. Was, it was a great honor because uh, it was interesting, you know, interesting, especially the 10 Downing Street. I thought just a normal door, but once you walk in, it's enormous. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, and the, the both uh, Prime Minister reassured themselves that they would still continue with the good work. And, uh, and um, in a way, I think uh, Scotland should have more to say about their own affair. That I feel strongly about their own affair because Scotland have right to do so and uh, everybody should respect that.